If you're still excited about the magnetic mask and what it can do, but you want to start to dive into some of the other features of Final Cut Pro and see how we can incorporate those together, then this is the video for you. Together in this video, we're going to build this cool transition right here. So I hope that you're excited to get started. Let's dive in. Now, to create this transition, we're gonna use a few different techniques in Final Cut Pro. We're gonna use speed ramping, we're also gonna use some shape mask, and we're gonna use the magnetic mask. Putting all of those things together, we'll be able to create this transition. So now over here in Final Cut Pro, we have two different clips. One is our background that's gonna ultimately be where it transitions to. And then the other one is going to be the runner that we have in the foreground where it starts and then it transitions over to the background. So the first thing we wanna do is get our background clip onto the timeline. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna hit the E key. The E key will put the clip at the end of the timeline. And so if there were other clips here, then it would have put it at the end of those clips. But since there's no clips here, that's just gonna drop it down onto the timeline line for us. Now the next part we want to do is add our runner on top of that and then we're going to do some manipulation to that runner. And so as you saw in the beginning there's a part in the clip where the runner kind of speeds up really fast and it looks like he's just running really fast through it. That's accomplished with a speed ramp. So to create a speed ramp in Final Cut Pro it's actually pretty easy. On the timeline down here we're just going to hit the R key and that's going to choose the range tool. Now you could also get to it by clicking up here and going to range selection but the R key just is a shortcut to be able to grab that tool. So we have to find the spot where we want the actual speed ramp to start. So I think probably right about here, as soon as he gets past that little steel block, I want the speed ramp to begin. So I'm just gonna click and hold right there, and then I'm gonna drag on the timeline until I want the speed ramp to end. And I think as he gets pretty close to the camera, right around here, I'm gonna want the speed ramp to end. So we'll just end it right there. And so all we're doing is selecting a range on the clip like that. Now to do the speed ramp, it's really easy. You just go up here to your speed tools here and we're gonna click fast. And we want this to actually be four times faster like that. And you can see that it adjusts the timeline and it makes it shorter because this little portion right here is now faster. And I'm gonna zoom in really quick just so you can see that these little darker areas over here, this is the actual length or the duration of the speed ramp, how quickly it speeds up over time. And so we want that to actually go a little bit quicker because if we just kind of play this back, you'll see that it goes, but it's kind of a quick transition up to running fast like that. So we wanna slow that down just a little bit. So to do that, we'll grab these little handles here and we'll just kind of pull it closer towards. So we'll just go back toward the beginning. And then on the other side, we're going to want the ramp to be a little bit longer on this side. So we'll kind of pull it this way too. So it, it speeds up a little slower and then it slows down a little slower. And that's all there really is to creating a speed ramp in Final Cut Pro. You just have to select the range of the clip where you want it to speed up and slow down. And then you use those handles to be able to kind of determine how quickly it speeds up and how quickly it slows down. I don't believe that there's a place in Final Cut Pro where you can adjust the curvature of the actual ramp. That would be a really nice feature, so I'm hoping that they add that soon. Or if it already exists, then please tell me in the comments because I cannot find it but this is the simplest and easiest way to do a speed ramp. Now there's a million ways that we can use speed ramping, so I will definitely make a video about that because there's a lot of different speed ramp transitions and cool things that we can do. So expect to see that in another video. But now that we've created the speed ramp part, we can actually start to handle the masking. Now, the reason we did the speed ramp first is because if we didn't, if we applied the magnetic mask and did the analysis and all that, and then we changed the speed of the clip, the timing of the magnetic mask would be off. It would completely mess everything up. So if there's any kind of a timing change that you need to do in your clip, you need to make sure that you do that first before you apply the magnetic mask because otherwise it's going to completely mess it up and the timing will be off. And yes, I learned that the hard way. Now there's a couple of masks that need to be used in this clip to make this happen and work effectively. The first thing we're gonna need to do is use a draw mask. So as you scrub through the video here and we just go across, you can see that tree comes into frame and it goes across. That's gonna be the point where we put a mask and we make the next background scene become visible. And so we're gonna use that draw mask and we're gonna animate it to go across the screen and basically wipe the new background across the screen. 
And this part is easy to do, it's just a little tedious, it's time consuming. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. We'll do a few different frames and then I'll kind of speed through to kind of show you how I did it. So the first thing we do, we go over here to our effects and we grab the draw mask and we're going to apply that to our video clip here, okay? And now that we have the draw mask on here, we can start to choose points, okay? It's saying to click to add control points. So to do that, we actually wanna make a mask that goes, let me find a good spot where the tree is visible, like somewhere around here so we can kind of see some points. We're gonna to wanna to make a few different points here. So we'll click out here as our first point, and then we'll just kind of come over here, but I'm gonna go off the screen like this, and the top point is going to be the top of the tree. The next point down is gonna be that little bend in the tree right there. Another point is gonna be the next bend right there. And then we'll have a point for the bottom as well. Okay, so, we, so that we can manipulate these points later on. And then we're going to create a point over here, and then we're gonna create a point here. Now this draw mask, we're actually gonna manipulate and animate those points, and we're gonna make them kind of animate across the screen so that it wipes away the foreground and the background becomes visible. And now this is the tedious part. So to do this, we actually have to go kind of frame by frame and animate this. We could select the beginning right here and then kind of go until the tree starts to come into frame. And then we could choose a future frame and we could just kind of set a breakpoint there and have it animate across. But we run the risk then of the mask not actually keeping up with the tree and there being a weird space. So we are going to do this frame by frame. And since it's such a short clip, there's not a lot of frames, it shouldn't take too long. But let me give you an example of how we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna find a point where the frame, where the tree just starts to come into frame right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my arrow keys to kind of go frame by frame through this. So we got that frame here, the other side of the tree starts to become visible right here. So we actually want to pull this back one frame and we want to start to align our mask to that tree. So we're gonna go right there. We'll put one right in that bend here and then we'll put one in this bend here and then we'll do right there at the edge of the screen. And I'm just gonna actually pull this top one up a little bit so that it covers the whole tree just like that. And that's our first frame. And now what we need to do is we need to go over here to our control points and we need to click on this keyframe right over here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna set an initial keyframe that says all of our mask is going to sit at this point right here. And now as we go, starting from the point where the tree is visible, we go through, okay, that's our first frame. We go past that. Now in this frame where it's moved over here, we're gonna move our mask over to match all of those different points. So we're gonna be right at the edge of the tree. And we're gonna do that here. And we're going to do that over here so that it's covering that whole side of the tree right there, okay? And it should automatically create the break point because here it is kind of auto breaking on every time we make a change now. So now that we've done that frame, we can move one more frame and we can move the mask again and then we can kind of get it so that it lines up with each side of that tree in each one of those little bended points like that. Okay, that looks good. So we will go to the next frame. Now the next frame, you can see there's a space here. So we're gonna keep moving this over and over, making sure that all of those different points, those control points match up with the side of the tree. I'll do a few of these, so we'll go to the next frame and lining them up bit by bit, like this, like this, and like this. Now the number of control points that you use here are 100% going to be dependent on the object you're trying to mask out, right? So in this case, this tree has like four different like arches in it, and so those control points are accounting for those little kind of bends in the tree. And now we'll go to the next frame. We're going to do the next one here. And we're just gonna keep doing this all the way through every single frame until this background over here becomes completely visible and wipes off the other side of the screen. So at this point, I'm gonna go frame by frame and move the mask keyframe per keyframe every single time. And I'll speed this up so you can just kind of see it happen really quick, but then we'll talk about this on the other side.
Okay, so now that we've added all of the keyframes to that mask, this is what it looks like. So if we just kind of scrub through this, you can see that the foreground follows the mask, it gets masked out, and the background kind of comes into play as we go across. Now that's only like half of the battle here. That's making the foreground get wiped away, but we want to keep him, the character, in the scene because we want him to continue to run through into the new background. So now to do that, we need to duplicate this layer. So we're gonna hold down the Option key and we're just going to click on it and drag it up above our existing one here. And now this one here also has that mask on it because we just made a duplicate, but we don't want that draw mask on there. So we're just gonna remove the draw mask from the top layer. Now on the top layer, we're gonna add the magnetic mask to our subject here. So we'll find a point where he's kind of like fully in frame right here, that's a good one. And we're going to apply the magnetic mask to our subject. So we'll go over here to our magic wand. We'll choose add magnetic mask for that particular clip. And now that we have a magnetic mask here, we'll use the dropper to choose the subject. We'll zoom in a little bit, let's say like to 75, just to kind of get rid of some of the imperfections here. So we definitely want the space around him, but we don't want the space in between. And we don't want the space in between the legs here, but we do want the foot, not the space there. I don't want like that little bit of space there, but I do want the foot. I think that's gonna be okay. Let's kind of jump back out to fit here and look. I think that's good. So we'll go through and we'll actually analyze our character here and we'll see how this one does. Now, I unfortunately did have to learn the hard way that you have to make sure that you do any timing changes before you apply the magnetic mask. Because if you apply the magnetic mask and then you make a timing change, it's gonna completely mess up the timing of the video. The magnetic mask will not be appropriately applied to each frame and it'll completely break everything for you. So again, make sure that you do any timing changes to your video before you apply the magnetic mask. And as always, the magnetic mask is doing an amazing job just masking out the character. It knows exactly which parts are the character. There are very few flaws in this thing. That is why I love this feature so much. And as we go through the analysis part here, I just wanna thank everybody for watching. I wanna thank you for showing up, leaving comments, leaving ideas. Please make sure that you leave ideas down below of things that you wanna see. I've done a lot of magnetic mask videos here, but I'm also going to start diving into all of the different features of Final Cut Pro and start building videos to kind of show you some cool different techniques, different strategies, that kind of thing. So definitely leave ideas down below of things you wanna see that aren't related to the magnetic mask or are either way. But I just wanna make sure that if there's something you wanna see then I'm looking into it and trying to make it happen for you. Interestingly, you can see here that some of the actual background is getting masked out here now that the actual subject has gone off the screen. So that's something to pay attention to. We might have to just go through and wipe out the magnetic mask after a certain point. Okay, so now it's actually gone through, it's analyzed. So we're just gonna click done here. And then let's go kind of watch this going through just to see what it looks like. He runs through, it swipes, and then he continues on the screen. So overall, it looks pretty good. There's some things we can clean up. Let's kind of make it look a little bit better now. So the first thing I wanna do is just clip off what's here. So I'm just gonna hit Option and the forward square bracket to trim that back a little bit. And now let's kind of clean some of this up. So if we just kind of scrub through here, first of all, we will look and see as it comes through the edge of this, we could probably add a little bit of feathering to the edge of this. So if we just click on here and look at our scene, our mask over here, we can kind of feather it in either direction. So maybe we'll kind of feather it back a little bit like that, just so it doesn't show as much of any space on the other side of the tree, like that. So, and it also, that part happens kind of fast, so you won't see it as much, but I just kind of like to add a little bit of feathering to that just to make it look a little smoother. So that's happening, it goes through and it's working quite well. And now on him, you can see that there is kind of a bit of an outline around him. So we're gonna click on this clip up here and we will actually feather kind of into the negative until that little outline goes away from him, which is good there. Okay, and now at a certain point, we're going to want to kind of blend him into this background. So as he crosses into here, I might add just like a little bit of yellow into this clip here. I'm gonna go up here to my highlights and I think I might just kind of add a little bit of yellow into the highlights here. All right, as he gets into here, I'm going to just try to maybe mess around with the coloring here. Just looking, kind of seeing like maybe add some blue into the shadows, 
a little bit of blue into the shadows there like that. And let's just see how that blends in the original out here. So does he look out of place? Not really. I think that's good. I think kind of adding a little bit, a very small amount of color correction to him. So we'll just kind of go through it one more time just to see. So there is an interesting point where we start to get here, where we start to see kind of like weird artifacts from the mask. So let's go to about right here. Going back over to our properties, we're gonna click on the magnetic mask so we can see it here. Now on this particular frame here, so we're gonna go frame by frame here now. So we got this frame and that one looks good. The next frame, if we go to it, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay. And we're just gonna go frame by frame here and fix some things. So we wanna actually undo with this little paintbrush here. So we're going to kind of get rid of some of this mask up here because that should not be there. We'll go to the next frame and we'll just keep kind of doing that where we're kind of cleaning up some of this masking on these frames like that. We'll go to the next frame and then we're just gonna keep doing this. We're gonna clean up where we don't need the mask here because it's just kind of artifacting and it's just getting a little strange. So we're gonna get rid of that, get rid of all that. Uh, we're gonna go through here, clean this up a little bit like that. We go to the next frame. He's starting to kind of disappear here. So we're gonna kind of very carefully just go through, get rid of all this stuff up here. He is still here, so it's like we're kind of getting like this little ghost trail of him. So we don't want that. Uh, I'm gonna kind of clean this up over here. And it's like he's kind of like getting a little ghosted in here. He's blending in with the background, but we're just kind of keeping this part of him in. And then we'll go to the next frame. And now like almost all of this is just artifact, right? We're not, this isn't even really him. So we're just gonna get rid of this. And we're just gonna get rid of this part all the way up to there. Kind of have to kind of like click and let go and see where the little, you know, marching ants are. We kind of have to get rid of all that stuff. We don't want these little artifacts to happen in here. And so this is kind of an important part of when you're doing this kind of magnetic mask stuff, you want to go in and clean up some of the stuff. If you're doing a project where it has to be perfect, like it can't look, there can't be any issues in here, you're going to want to use these tools and go in frame by frame sometimes and fix some of the parts that seem to be broken. And like I said, some of this can be tedious. You have to kind of go through and you have to fix spots for something like this if it has to be perfect for you. Now again, if you're just playing around and you're just trying to learn, you don't have to do all this stuff. But if it's a project where you want this to be perfect, you should go through and you should fix all the different little parts. And now I think if we get to a certain point where he's completely off the screen, we don't even need this clip anymore up here. So we could just actually go back until we get to a point where he's completely off the screen. So right here, this frame right here, we can actually go in and we can just clip that frame right there and get rid of it. And so that's basically it. That's kind of cool. We can go through, we, there's a bunch of different things you can do to kind of make this better. And I'm not going to spend hours like going through and fixing all of the little issues with this, but it's a cool little way to just use the draw mask. You can use some speed ramping, you can use the magnetic mask. You can use all of these different features together to create some cool little transitions and cool little video clips. And now the final piece of this is we noticed that that kind of background video is has some black on the top and the bottom. It's kind of slightly different format. So we're actually just gonna take that bottom clip. We're just going to kind of scale it up just a little bit like that. So it actually all fits in the same frame. And then finally, we can go through and I will render this and we can take a look at our final product. And so we were able to take 
the magnetic mask, we were able to use a draw mask, we were able to do some speed ramping, and we could kind of mix these things all together and create this kind of cool transition where we have a person running through a scene, it wipes off to the side and becomes a different scene, and the person continues to run through that scene. So just another cool thing that you can do with all of these different tools in Final Cut Pro, and if you thought that that was cool, you should definitely check this out.